No more. ENCA.com. For more on this story, we now speak to Dr. Jacqueline Weyer, medical scientist at the National Institute for Communicable Diseases. Dr. Weyer, thank you very much uh, for joining us. Now, we understand that uh, Dr. Jeremy Farah from uh, the Wellcome Trust has called for experimental drugs uh, to be administered to people at high risk of contracting uh, the Ebola virus. Now, what is your opinion on uh, such drugs? And do people really have a choice when it comes to something like this? a very loaded question. Thank you for asking the difficult question first. <laughs> I think obviously it, it's uh, the humanity and us. We, we want to give any patient obviously as much benefit and, and support them as much as possible. What you need to take in consideration is that experimental drugs wouldn't have not been tested exhaustively for safety and for efficacy. So does it work, number one? Are you going to achieve what you need to or what you in, intend to achieve by administering the drug? And number two, are you going to actually do more harm than good uh, when you are using something that's, that's not approved? So um, I think in the difficult healthcare settings um, that that that's occurring in these affected um, areas, you will definitely add more tax um, to the healthcare system. If you were to apply experimental drugs, these patients need to be monitored. Um, there's issues of patient consent. Um, patients need to understand the risks and, and the, the potential benefits that they, that they could um, enjoy from, from using the drugs. So it's really a very difficult question, something that needs to be addressed at, at various levels. There's consent issues, ethics issues, and are you going to do more harm than good? Do you think that uh, companies will now, after the latest and, and obviously most deadliest of outbreaks, uh, be more willing to give uh, money towards um, developing a vaccine? I'd like to say yes. I think in an ideal world one would want to see that, but I think one needs to put uh, it in context. Uh, in this world we live in, there's so much need for antiviral drugs, different antibiotics, vaccines, for diseases that we deal with every day. Ebola remains a serious and an agonizing disease, but it's certainly still rare. And if you think back, uh, the first description of Ebola was in 1976. I think if you tally up all of the people that have been affected by Ebola to date, it's not more than 3,000. So I don't want to take away from, from, from the horridness of the, of the outbreak, but certainly we're faced with so many healthcare issues, so many diseases that do need um, priority care. Uh, so it becomes an issue of priority and where to put the money to get the maximum. Now off air we were talking about you know the superstitions that uh, that come with uh, a virus like Ebola. Now what can be done to alleviate the superstitions, the fears that obviously come with it and the distrust of those uh, people who are coming in perhaps trying to help the communities that are facing the problem? Yeah, so you're not just dealing with superstitions that might have a negative um, connotation but you're dealing with subsets of cultures, you're dealing with subsets of, of beliefs, um, religious beliefs that people might have, ways of responding to the sick, ways of responding to the dead. And you need to have respect for that. And you need to be able to find a way to communicate with the communities, uh, preferably in their own language, using um, uh, tools that they would understand to try and explain to them and try and make them understand how to respond to the disease so that one could get to a point where the disease can 